I'm live. Hi. A little early. One minute early. Oh, right on time. <laughs> I'm going to sit up here like um, Mr. Rogers and take my socks off. Um, yeah, welcome uh, streamers and dreamers and pre-recorded-ers. Um, yeah, someone's here. Hello. Uh, <laughs> again, my the only person I know who watches on Wednesday are um, Jeffrey and Scotty. So if it's if that's you, uh, I'm glad you're here. Uh, also, my I talked to my brother, and he said he sometimes watches um, on Wednesday evenings, and uh, he was telling me he does some of it and then lifts some weights, which I I enjoyed hearing. So. Um, you, you know, if you're tuning in and not doing everything, that's cool. I, it's, if it, this is just entertaining, that's cool too. Uh, you'll notice I have some, been doing this uh, painting of my, um, the un, it's a painting of underneath the power lines outside my house. Um, uh, <laughs> and it's been a nice experience. It's been, it, Painting a landscape, uh, plain air, is not something that I've ever done before, but um, it's a very meditative experience, and um, yeah. Anyway, let's get on the mat. I don't know what I'm sitting up here for. I was just waiting for those numbers to come up. Um, okay, so 60-minute um, class today. Let's get started quickly. Uh, gather your things. If you have, uh, if you have blocks, uh, we might use two or even three blocks. I mean, I was, I was mentioning probably only yoga teachers own three blocks, but, um, <laughs> but if you happen to have a lot of blocks, get them around you. A strap, a block, a blanket, we're going to use all those things today. So uh, the, the theme of my class today is um, receptivity. So we're really um, focusing on listening and focusing on accepting what we hear. Okay, so uh, we're gonna start in Virasana or hero pose with the knees together, shins angled back, toes pointed. Grab the flesh of the calves, pull it back and apart as you take a seat between your heels. So I slid a blanket up, or I slid, I slid a block underneath my hips because I often I'm confronted with knee pain when I get into this shape. So if you are like me, get some padding underneath your hips. It might be a block, it might be two blocks, uh, it might be a blanket. Also, I often hear the um, comment about this pose that the uh, this is a pretty painful or distracting with the ankles. So if you have a uh, blanket, a way to alleviate that discomfort is to take a blanket or two and let the feet drape over the blankets. Okay, you can manually grab your buttocks, pull the flesh of your buttocks back and apart to get a better connection between your sits bones and whatever you're seated on. Now, once you've found your shape, close your eyes and settle in. Does this, do you feel supported in this shape? If not, you might continue to make adjustments. Rest your hands on your thighs. With your eyes closed, invite yourself into this space and time that you have set aside for the yoga practice. So we're kind of ma we're making a transition into the practice, and at this time it might be helpful to to be uh, reflective, to be receptive to what is happening in this moment. So that that invitation, that transition into this moment, uh, let's be conscious around that transition. What is physically, what are you physically experiencing in this moment? You might have some residual tension or physical anxiety that is uh, being carried with you from your day so far. Notice how that feels, uh, where that resides. And 
as you look, as you listen, let's first consider having some acceptance around what we're seeing, what we're hearing, what we're feeling. So we're doing this on a physical level, noticing the breath, noticing what thoughts we might have as we've, uh, as we've come to our seat th this evening. And then if there are prescient thoughts, identify them, accept that those are there, and I invite you to attempt to set those things aside for the course of the class. Again, invite yourself here. Settle down through the legs and hips as though rooting the lower body into the earth. And then from that energetic connection, consciously grow tall along your spine. You might shrug your shoulders up towards your ears, lengthening the sides of the body before looping the shoulder blades together behind the heart, contracting the muscles of the upper back as the chest opens and lifts. Let the forearms be heavy towards the earth, bringing with them the shoulder blades down the back side of the chest. Chin parallel to the floor, back of the neck long, crown of the head lifted. Perhaps a gentle tone to the upper abdomen in order to lengthen the low back and strengthen the core. Notice expression on the face. As we turn the attention inward, let the face become soft and neutral. Forehead broad, eyelids heavy, cheeks slack, jaw soft. And now turn your attention to your breath. Breathe in and out through your nostrils. Begin the triumphant uprising breath, ujjayi pranayama, by drawing in a gentle contraction at the back of your throat, shrinking the area through which you draw air in and allow air to escape your body, allowing you to breathe more slowly, more deeply, and also having this, um, this effect of giving the breath more, um, <laughs> more visibility, uh, as you can hear it now. I like to think of this sound, I like to uh, compare it to the sound of ocean waves. This calming experience of waves crashing in and receding out just as breath swells and ebbs. As you turn your attention to the breath, as you take control of the breath, you might notice places along the course of the inhale or the exhale where breath is, um, is stunted or slows down, gets a little bit uh, jerky. <laughs> um, notice all of those things and again, approach the present moment, approach your experience with curiosity but also with acceptance. From acceptance of this moment, we can move forward into the next. And I'd like to invite you today, as we, uh, as we meditate here on the breath, to um, count the duration of your next deep inhalation. And whatever that number is, I'd like you to try to match it with the duration of your exhalation.
Again, count the duration of your next inhalation. Opportunity at the top of the breath to just sip in any more air to cap off the lungs and then match that number with your conscious, slow, even exhalation, emptying from top to bottom. Continue this pattern of one to one. So um, whatever the inhale is, matching it with the exhale. Three more. you have finished your third exhalation. Resume your breathing and today we're just going to flutter open the eyes. Okay, from here uh, you might move the block from underneath your hips out to the side as we come to our first twist. Keep the knees together, swing the feet out to the left, landing the right hip on the mat or on some height. The uh, left Oh, sorry. We're going to go left first. We're going to continue with the recent trend of uh, starting with the left side. So swing the feet out to the outside of the right hip, ground the left hip. So the uh, left ankle is in the arch of the right ankle is in the arch of the left foot, excuse me. Uh, grow tall and now take your arms up like football goal posts. So elbows in towards the armpits, palms face forward. And now we're going to begin to twist the upper body towards the left using the strength of the abdominal muscles. So we're going to really start with the low belly, low back. Feel the strength of the abdominal muscles revolving around the central channel of your spine. And now bring the left hand to the floor behind you, right hand to your left thigh. Grow tall once again, and using the hand against the thigh, the hand against the floor, move the upper back, upper body into the twist, into the rotation. Collarbones broad, eventually taking the gaze back, maybe even thinking about looking over the left shoulder, chin parallel to the floor, left hip grounding, crown of the head lifted, Breath along the spine, exploring the space between the shoulder blades, exploring with breath, with intention, with receptivity. So be receptive to what your experience is in this moment and consider that even if this is a posture you've done a uh, hundred times before, Today is a new day. You're coming from your practice from a new perspective. Inhale, come back through center, counter twist, and then knees together, swing your feet out to the left, taking a seat now on the right hip, perhaps on some padding. Arms up like football goal post. Inhale, grow tall, and exhale to revolve. Again, using the inner the muscles, the inner body to revolve from 
left to right, and there might be a, uh, you might not be as deep into the twist as you're used to being. So uh, sit with that, have some acceptance around that, and then we'll bring the hands into the position. Left hand to the thigh, right hand behind, collarbones broad, shoulder blades on the back, moving into the upper back, moving into the neck, and eventually the gaze going back towards the wall behind you, maybe even over the right shoulder. Chin parallel to the floor. Notice where tension might build in the face, perhaps between the eyebrows, the outer edges of the mouth. And then as we move into the shape, turn, uh, turn the gaze inward, soften and neutralize the facial expression. Inhale back through center, little counter twist, and we'll come forward to the top of our mats in a tabletop shape. Plant the wrists below your shoulders, knees are hip width distance, and we are going to move into our cat pose with an inhale. Inhale, tailbone down, chin tucks towards the chest, belly button towards the ceiling, round the spine, open up the back body, in our Halloween cat pose, and then exhale into the cow pose. Belly deeply towards the floor, tailbone and gaze, lift, and inhale once again, cat pose. So continue through these two postures with your breath, exploring the range of motion of your spine, perhaps noticing as you move, as you breathe, that this, uh, this start, these shapes start to open up incrementally. Your range of motion may slowly begin to broaden. So um, I've been trying to do familiar things in unfamiliar ways as a way of kind of jolting us out of the, um, the familiarity, the, the, the idea of uh, being, <laughs> getting, getting too comfortable to a place where we're not uh, we're not as exploratory with our practices. So you can try it this way. If you uh, would prefer in this moment to be in a more comfortable zone where um, breath is synchronized in a different way, then go back to that. It's your practice. Inhale back to a neutral spine. And we're going to take the right hand below the face, left hand to the back of the skull. Inhale, open the chest towards the left. Look up as the elbow points skyward and exhale, curl in. Inhale, open the chest left, look up, elbow point skyward, exhale, curl in. Three more, inhale, open left, exhale, curl in. Notice how the rest of the body accommodates these movements. Inhale, open left, exhale, curl in. One more, inhale, open left, head into hand, gaze up, Exhale, curl in, shoulder blades apart. Left hand below the face, right hand to the back of the skull. Inhale, open right, elbow up. Exhale, curl, elbow towards wrist or forearm. Inhale, open up. Exhale, curl in. Inhale, open. Exhale, curl. Two more. Inhale, open right. Exhale, curl, last one. Inhale, open to the right. Exhale, back to your tabletop position. From here, we're gonna walk the knees back, maybe six to eight inches, tuck the toes under, shoulders over the wrist, tilt your tailbone towards the ceiling as though you're doing cow pose in the low back, reach the chin forward. As you exhale, bend the elbows straight back to lower the chin and chest to the floor at roughly the same time. Elbows in towards the side ribs. Slide forward onto your belly, chin on the floor. We're going to pay some special attention to the legs right here. Relax the right leg, engage the left leg. So this uh, may make your quad sore later on. At least that was my experience from doing this practice earlier in the week. So point through your toes and push your left foot strongly into the floor as you engage your left quadricep muscles. So feel the kneecap lift away from the floor with that contraction of the muscles. 
Keep the leg uh, toned. As you reach back through the toes, lift the left leg off of the floor. Front of the left hip stays down. Extend, tone, and lift. Extend, tone, and lift. And then completely release the left leg down. Allow the heel to widen out the quadricep muscles to decompress. Reach back through the right toes. Engage the right quadricep muscles. Lift the right kneecap. And then extend, contract, and lift. Engage the leg, lengthen the leg, lift the leg. Engage, extend, lift, engage, extend, lift. Keeping the front of the right hip point grounded. And then relax the right leg completely. You might shimmy the hips a little bit. And we're gonna do both legs together. Point the toes back, press the feet down, press the feet down, press the feet down so the kneecaps lift. Feel the front of the pelvis push into the floor. Squeeze the legs, tone the legs, lengthen the legs, lift the legs. Tone, squeeze, lengthen, lift. Keep going, keeping the front of the hip points grounded and then let it go. Press both feet into the floor, trying to imprint the tops of your feet into the mat, tone the quadricep muscles, lengthen through the tailbone, hands by the ribs, elbows towards the ceiling, shoulder blades on the back, inhale, peel the chin and chest up off the floor, little baby cobra pose, look mom, no hands, lift the palms up off the floor, contract the shoulder blades together, lengthen the collarbones, and then place the hands down, begin to lift the chest as you push the hands downward, pull the hands back. So elbows back, elbows in, collarbones broad, feet pressing down, kneecaps lift, front of the pelvis grounds, sides of the neck back, crown of the head lifts, big old cobra pose, and lower it back down, chin to, excuse me, chin to the floor. Tuck the toes, lengthen through the heels, lift the kneecaps, Push into the floor to come up into a plank position. So a push up from the floor. Inhale and plank, and then exhale, shift those hips up and back. DFD, walk out that dog. Bend one knee, reach the opposite heel, down towards or to the ground, maybe shifting the hips from side to side. Talk to those legs. One leg tighter or shorter? today or always, <laughs> if so, talk to that leg. Give that leg that needs attention, attention in the form of awareness, in the form of breath, in the form of prana, vital energy moving through the body. Bring your dog to some degree of stillness, keeping any amount of bend in the knees, push the hands down and forward, reach the hips up and back, and today is the day. We are going to do three sets of push-ups. We've been doing push-ups, so we're gonna build our strength, build upon our strength. Inhale forward to plank, possibly coming to your knees for this practice. Exhale, lower down with control. Inhale, push back up. Exhale, because it's yoga, we're gonna do downward facing dog between each push-up. That's one, four more first set. Inhale forward to plank. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, press. Exhale, hips lead you back to. Inhale, forward. Exhale, lower. Inhale, press. Exhale, back three. Inhale, forward. Root through the knuckles. Exhale, lower down. Root through the knuckles. Press up. Exhale, press back four. Inhale, forward. Exhale, lower. Inhale, press. Exhale, back. Downward facing dog. Somehow, over the course of five push-ups, I, I tend to lose count. I don't know if we did five or four, <laughs> but we're doing two more sets, so I'm not too worried about it. Inhale, lift the left leg straight up and back into your three-legged dog. Hands down and forward, hips up and back, left knee and toes point straight down as you lift through the back and or upper thigh. Release the right heel more deeply towards the floor as you lift along the front of the right leg. Look to the top of your mat. When you are ready, lunge your left foot between your hands. Set up with a long stride. You can have blocks on either side of your front foot. If you like blocks, take the time to get blocks. If, uh, if you don't know, 
then try it. Okay, so we're coming to a low lunge, right knee bends to the floor. You might pad that back knee by doubling up your mat or placing a blanket there. So we're just going to let the hips relax. Oh man, that feels good. <laughs> feels good just to, to, I don't know, it just feels like you're just, I'm just melting into the couch kind of feeling, like just setting it down. Let the hips be heavy and uh, feels a little bit sloppy. Just let the hips weigh forward. And then we're going to tidy things up. So <laughs> bring the right knee forward, pull the left heel back, tone the legs towards center in order to square the hips. And then from here, exhale, send the hips back, round the spine, chin to chest, left leg straight, reach through the heel, pull back through the toes into a runner's type stretch, possibly walking the hands back. And then with an inhale or an exhale, you might shift forward. So explore these two shapes, shifting hips forward and back with the breath. Just like cat-cow, we're exploring the, some range of motion in the spine as well. So as you fold over the leg, you're rounding the spine. As the hips shift forward into lunge, the shoulders are rolling back, curling the heart open. And one more shift to the, with the hips back. Come forward to the low lunge once again. Scissor the legs in as you bring your hands to your front thigh, press your elbows straight, interlace your fingers against your thigh, press your elbows straight, prop up your chest. Keep the legs scissoring in, right knee forward, left heel back, sides of the waistline back, tailbone down, collarbones broad, chest lifted, and then exhale, slowly begin to extend through the knees. As you contract the legs, towards one another. As you pull towards center, you are now also expanding. You can do, you can experience that as a pulse. So there's an exhale with the ex, or there's an expansion with the exhalation. There's a contraction with the inhalation, or you can try to do those things simultaneously. Okay, arms to the sides, shoulders roll back, palms turn forward. Inhale, sweep the arms overhead. Reach the fingertips towards the ceiling. And then tilt the gaze up, chin up. Lift into the back of the heart and either choose to stay here or start to reach back with the arms, reach back with the gaze, continue to lift through the heart space. Soften the edges of the mouth. Anjane Asana, mother of the splits, mother of Hanuman. And then chest forward, arms forward, head comes up. Left hand to the thigh, move back through the hips. Draw back through the sides of the waistline and then hook your right elbow to the outside of the left thigh. Either choose to stay here, using the pressure of the elbow against the thigh to revolve the right ribs towards the left wall, or slide the armpit towards the outer thigh going, uh, bringing the elbow deeper towards the floor, maybe hands to prayer, the thumbs to the sternum, maybe scissoring the legs in and lifting the back knee off of the floor for this deep uh, twisting lunge. Soften the edges of the mouth, reconnect with the breath in this shape, notice what you're feeling, where you're feeling, that you're feeling. And then look down, knee down, hands frame the front foot, step back, downward facing dog. Again, you might walk it out. Reacquaint with your dog. And we will do our second set of five push-ups. Inhale forward to plank, exhale lower, inhale press, exhale back one. Inhale forward, remember this can all be done on the knees, exhale lower, inhale press, Exhale back two. Inhale forward, exhale lower. Inhale press, exhale back three. Inhale forward, exhale lower. Inhale press, exhale back four. Last one, second set. Inhale forward, 
Exhale, lower. Inhale, press. Exhale, back. Five, left foot towards center, right leg lifts, straight up and back. Prolonged three-legged dog pose. Right knee and toes point down so the hips stay level. Wrap the right outer hip down as you lift through the right inner thigh. Lengthen the left heel, lift along the front side of the left leg. Hands push evenly down and forward. Look to the top of your mat. As you're ready, lunge your right foot between your hands, creating a long stride. Okay, hands frame the front foot, fingertips, fists, or on blocks. Left knee to the floor. Ha. <sighs> Let those hips be heavy. You know, get, get sloppy, get messy. <laughs> See if it feels good. Um, yeah. Yeah, feels good. Okay, squeeze the legs. Tidy up. Right heel back, left knee forward. Chest and hips square forward. And as you exhale next, Send the hips back, round the spine, chin to chest, forehead towards or to the knee, left toes point up, left toes pull back, runner stretch, and then shift forward, possibly with the exhale, shoulders back, possibly with the inhale, and move forward and back, synchronizing the breath in whatever way makes sense to you or whatever way uh, challenges your um, challenges your practice. It's worth saying, some days you come to your mat and you, you uh, want less challenge than another day. Sometimes you're just on your mat for survival. I've been there. Okay, one more, uh, hips back. Hips forward, uh, scissor the legs, hands to the front thigh, interlace the fingers, press the elbows straight, prop up the chest, lower ribs in and back, tailbone down, lower spine long, crown of the head lifts, and then as you pull in, then expand out. Pulse possibly, extending through the knees as you exhale, contracting back as you inhale, or find a way to create those actions simultaneously. Hands to the sides, palms forward, shoulders back, collarbones broad, inhale, sweep the arms up, tilt the chin up, look up, heart up, arms back, chin up, gaze back, curl in the upper body. Soften the edges of the mouth. Notice the effects of this shape. Are you going for uh, what the pose looks like or what the pose feels like? Turn the gaze in. Chest forward, hands to the blocks, hands to the front thigh, shift the hips back, scissor the legs in, right hand stays where it is, left arm reaches up out of the left waistline, waistline back, elbow hooks to the outside of the right thigh, possibly sliding down towards the earth, armpit towards the thigh, hands together, thumbs to the sternum, stack the shoulders, stack the elbows, look up, option to lift the back knee, low uh, prayer twist lunge, soften the edges of the mouth, again arrive with the breath, arrive with the moment, arrive with the body in this shape, what are you feeling, where are you feeling, if you're feeling unsafe, Back off. Go to the thing that came before it. Look down, knee down, hands down, frame the front foot, press it back, a downward facing dog. Walk it out. Hips side to side, bend the knees. Feel some equanimity return to the legs and the hips. And now it's time for our final Set up five push-ups. Inhale, forward to plank, possibly coming to your knees. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, press. Exhale, back one. Inhale, forward. Exhale, lower. Inhale, press. Exhale, back two. Inhale, forward. Exhale, lower. Inhale, press. Exhale, back three. 
Inhale forward, exhale lower. Inhale, press, exhale back four. Last one, gonna change it up. We're gonna come forward to plank with an inhale. We're gonna exhale, chaturanga. Roll over the tops of the feet, push the hands down, push the chest up, upward facing dog, hold with the breath. Push the feet down, remember, push the feet down, engage the quads, lift the thighs, lift the hips, shoulders on the back, collarbones broad, pull back with the hands isometrically to expand the chest forward. Gaze turns up, side to neck back, and then roll over those toes, push it back, downward facing dog, walk it out. Whew, I'll tell you, my quads are feeling really strong <laughs> this week. <laughs> okay, look to the top of your mat. We are going to practice hopping to the top of our mat. First of five, bend your knees, lift onto your toes, drop through the sides of your waistline, shift your shoulders forward a few inches, feel the weight move more into your hands. Root through your knuckles. Look where you're going. At the end of your next exhale, pull your belly button strongly towards your spine, lift your hips high into the air. And arrive at the top of your mat. Hop or step back. Bend the knees, lift the toes, drop to the sides of the waistline, shift the shoulders forward, look forward, exhale. Three more. Bend the knees, lift the toes, drop through the sides of the waistline, look forward, shift forward, exhale. Okay, option two, spontaneously uh, arrive in a handstand. So if that is going to happen and you're not uh, so sure about that happening, bring your whole self and mat to a wall space. So the idea is that you're getting your hips so high that you can shoot your legs straight up in the air so your heels would be over your hips, your hips would be over your shoulders, your shoulders would be over your hands. Look to the top of your mat, exhale, all right. Last one, last one. Bend the knees, drop to the sides of the waistline, shift the shoulders forward, look forward, exhale. And we've made it to the top of our mats. Step your feet hip width distance apart, lift and spread your toes, bend your knees, rest your torso on your thighs, let your upper body hang forward. Take hold of opposite wrists, forearms, or biceps. Arrive in this shape, arrive in this opportunity to let the earth draw the upper body downward, creating space between the vertebra along the spine. You can shift side to side, right to left, front to back, sway the arms, shake the head, yes and no. Identifying tension, accepting te tension, option to loosen the grip. <laughs> how, do, how do you do that? Well, the first, the first thing you have to do is know it's there. So let's start with that. What do you feel? Where do you feel? How do you feel? You might connect this shape with this idea of energy movement. So as you inhale, there's this uh, liquid-like movement up the backs of the legs, pooling in the hips. As you exhale, this movement cascades down the length of the spine, out through the elbows, out through the crown of the head, like a waterfall. Okay, fingertips to the floor in front of you or to a block. Push your feet down as you start to gain length, add length to the backs of your legs as you lift your hips up, lift into the kneecaps, again engage the quadriceps, extend the crown of the head towards the floor, widen the elbows out towards either side of the room, lift the shoulders up away from the ears as you fold into yourself opening up the back side of the body. Notice what you're feeling, where you're feeling. And as you inhale next, bring your fingertips towards your shins, straighten your elbows, lift your chest halfway, shoulders on the back. Exhale, and once again, flow forward, head down, hands to the block or the floor. 
Again, inhale, lift halfway, coming up a little bit higher with the fingers extended straight. Noticing the difference. Exhale, fold, last time. Inhale, lift halfway, grounding through the outsides of the feet, shoulder blades on the back. Exhale, fold deeply in. Inhale, sweep your arms out, up and overhead. Push down through your feet, reach up, look up, palms touch at the top. Exhale, look forward, hands come through heart center. Shoulders roll back, arms up, palms turn forward. Arrive in your Tadasana. So notice any uh, adjustment that happens here. Maybe there's physical adjustments that you're making to your body, but maybe there's also a sense of, um, of re, <laughs> what would you call it, um, reorientation. As your head was down for so long, now your head is up, your head is high. Connect to this shape, become your mountain, embody your mountain. Consider the qualities of the mountain. Consider how those qualities are uh, present in this shape, in this form. The strength of your legs pushing down from into the earth and rising up tall from that ground. Broad in the chest. Again, opportunity to slow down, reconnect with the sensation of the physical body. Connect with the breath. And as you inhale next, sweep your arms overhead, possibly look up as your palms touch. Exhale, gently bend your knees as you flow forward, fingertips to a block or the floor. Inhale, lift halfway. Fingertips to the shins. Exhale, fold deeply in, release the head. Inhale, rise, push down through the feet, look up, reach up. Exhale, hands through heart center, shoulders roll back, palms open forward. With your own breath, one more half sun salutation. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale to fold. Inhale, rise. Exhale, find your way back to the mountain. Okay. So for the next series of sequences, or the, for the next few poses, we're either going to take a block between the thighs, keeping the feet apart, or bring the inner ankles and inner knees together. This week I've been uh, liking the block, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to demonstrate with the block between the thighs. Create a wide base with the feet, root down, tone the muscles up the legs, lengthen down the tailbone, open up, mountain pose, inhale, sweep your arms overhead, interlace your fingers, cross your thumbs, reach up out of your waistline, grow tall, keep your hips and chest squared forward as you exhale, lean the upper body to the left, hip shift to the right. Push down through the outer edge of the right foot. Use the left arm to draw the right side body long. If you're feeling pain or compression in the low back, bring the left hand to the hip. Push down, lift up. Turn the gaze up beyond the right tricep muscles and turn their awareness along the right side body. Listen to the shoulder, the outer ribs, the outer waistline, the outer hip. Inhale back through center, switch the interlace of your fingers, grow tall, squeeze the legs, lift the quadriceps, exhale, upper body shifts right, hips shift left. Ground to the outer edge of the left foot, use the right arm to pull the left side body long. Hand to the hip if you need that support, if the, the, there is pain in the low back. Gaze goes up, soften the edges of the mouth as you turn your attention to the left side body. Shoulder, ribs, outer waist, outer hip. Inhale back to center. Keep the arms where they are or bring the hands to the back of the head for support of the neck. Arms reach up, arms start to pull back. 
Push down with the feet, lift through the heart, tilt the chin up, and we begin to move back. Arms back, gaze back. Arms back, gaze back, lift the heart. Push down through the feet, squeeze the block or the legs. Look back, curl back into the unknown. Chest forward, arms forward, head comes up last. Release the arms down to your sides. Couple of shoulder rolls forward, shoulder rolls back. And sweep the arms overhead. Exhale, gently fold forward. Fingertips to the floor to a block. Walk it out, bend the knees one at a time. Reaching the hips into the air one at a time. Releasing tension or compression from the low back. If it feels okay for the knees, Let's lift up onto the toes, sink the hips towards the heels, bend the knees forward. Do it once, do it twice, do it three times, why not? And come back up. Okay, squeeze that block or ankles and knees together. Take the arms forward. Turn the palms to face one another, reach through the fingertips, plug the arms into the shoulder sockets, then sweep the arms overhead. Shoulder blades continue to draw down the back. Draw the arms back without shutting the low ribs forward. Weight in the feet, obviously. <laughs> the weight in the feet is going to shift to the heels as you sink the hips down. Bend the knees forward. Upper body reaches up, curls back. Look up at the bottom of your chair. Inhale, stand back up. So that's one. We're going to do four more. We're going to hold on the, on the last one. Exhale, hips down. Look forward. Sink your hips down into that fiercely awkward chair. Look up, curl up. Inhale, stand up. You can take more than one breath, but generally you're going down the wall as you exhale, down the imaginary wall. Weight in the heels. Look up, curl up. Inhale, stand up. Two more. We're going to hold the last one. I already said that. Exhale, sit the hips down. Squeeze the ankles and knees or the block. Waistline back, tailbone tucks. Curl up, look up. Inhale, stand up. Last one. Guess what? We're going to hold it. <laughs> Exhale, hips down. Weight in the heels. Squeeze the block. Tuck the tailbone. Look up, reach up. Soften the edges of the mouth. Feel it, be it. Awkwardly fierce. Five, four, Three, two, one, stand up. Arms to your sides. Roll the shoulders forward, up, back. Roll the shoulders back, up, forward. Okay. Release that block if you have it. One last thing, standing up here. Okay, let me try to figure this out. <laughs> Doing uh, eagle pose with the opposite side first is confusing to me, but I'm going to attempt it anyway. Inhale, sweep the arms overhead. Exhale, left arm underneath the right. Grab palms, or if palms are not accessible, take hold of shoulders. Elbows down, chest lifts, upper body back. And I'm going to say, sit into your imaginary bar stool and lift your right leg up and over your left leg. Point the toes back, elbows down, chest lifts, upper body back. Sink weight down into your hips, weight in the left heel. If you have the space, you can attempt to wrap the right foot behind the left ankle. If that doesn't feel stable for the knees, uh, I would choose not to do that. That's what I'm choosing. <laughs> uh, elbows down, chest lifts, upper body back, weight in the heel. Wrap arms and legs tightly for five, four, three, two, and one. Slowly unwind. Sweep the arms overhead, this time right arm underneath the left. Grab palms or shoulders, elbows down, chest lifts, wrap the arms tightly, sink the hips down into your imaginary bar stool. Lift the left leg, point the left toes. Either wrap the foot or don't wrap the foot. Elbows down, hips low, upper body back. Hug arms and legs, weight in the heel for five, four, Three, two, one, stand up, arms up, reach up, look up, 
exhale, hands to the sides, and we are going to move right to the base of a wall. So this is where your blocks are really going to be called upon. So um, if you do not have blocks at this time, I would, I would suggest a, a hero pose as we began in, and you might go from hero pose like this into just a slightly or completely reclined position. Otherwise, I'm going to invite you block owners to a, um, to a supported bridge pose. So I, there's three settings of the block, low, mid, high. Take that block to the baseboard at one of the three settings, and then take your feet onto the block flush against the wall. This might take some adjusting. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about adjusting. Do, just, you know, embrace, embrace the journey here. Okay, so the second block is going to go at the same setting as the block that's against the wall. See, I'm, I'm having a hard time. <laughs> and uh, so we're going to find a place where the second block is supporting the pelvis. So this is the red X. I don't want my, uh, the bowl of my pelvis to be tilting forward. I want my hips, my sacral spine supported on the block underneath my hips. And then my feet at the wall. It'll take a lot of little micro adjusting here to make this happen. Okay, feet on the wall, hips on the block, Lengthen through the tailbone, tuck the shoulders under, and then gauge what you want in this moment as far as um, engagement or lack of. Do you want to just be in this moment supported by the blocks, your body um, being um, aided, propped into this shape, and then you can just experience the shape or do you want to push into the feet, lengthen through the tailbone, actively tuck the shoulders underneath the chest. Wherever you find yourself on that, um, that spectrum of engaging, return here. Keep returning back to your breath. Invite yourself into this shape. And I'm uh, just going to have us uh, be here for five more breaths. So as you're ready, first take the feet off of the wall and bring them down to the floor with the knees bent. Push the feet down, lift the hips up, remove the second block from underneath your hips. Let your back body settle into the floor, noticing the resonant energy of that shape. Okay, as you probably guessed, we're going to go over time a little bit here. Uh, we're going to do a little back bend sequence and then we'll start our cool down. So I'm going to call this our building bridges practice. So uh, if you have a block, then I encourage you to place a block at its lowest setting between the thighs. 
That will keep the knees from splaying apart and help you keep the lower body, the lower spine long. Arms at your sides, feet parallel, push your feet down, lift your hips up, lengthen through the tailbone, and then tuck, uh, interlace the fingers behind you, tuck your shoulder blades underneath your chest to begin to grow your bridge pose. So with the shoulder blades tucking underneath the chest, the idea is that the uh, vertebra, the, all the vertebra of the back body lift up. So you're, you're padded on your shoulders, the back of your head, and your feet. Uh, think about your block for a moment. Instead of thinking about pushing your block up high, think about lifting your hips up and extruding your block downward. So the inner thighs are actually trying to squeeze in and push down. Breathe along the front side of your body. Make sure you are breathing. Slowly lower the hips. Untuck the shoulders. Unlace the fingers. Remove the block. Walk the feet apart. Let the knees fall together or alternatively extend the legs straight to neutralize the spine. Arrive here with the body, with the breath. Neutralize. <laughs> so as the body shifts from, um, from engagement to release, let the emotions and the thought patterns attach to those movements. So do you notice here, uh, after that intense posture, that uh, you're your, your mind is um, gripping still. Your mind is still in that experience. Attempt the transition back to the breath as the breath slows down and deepens. So building bridge is bridge two. You can do the bridge as we've done before. You can take a bound bridge, or if you'd like to join me going right up into the wheel, as this is Wednesday night and we move, we move quickly here, um, I encourage you to turn once again to your wall space. Take those two um, blocks that you might have, angle them against the wall, and turn around so your head lands between your blocks. Your hands are on the blocks, fingertips towards the floor, elbows towards the ceiling, heels in towards the hips if you are attempting wheel today. If you are not, go up into the bridge. Otherwise, for wheel, push the feet down, lift the hips up, come to the top of the head. So we're moving into this in two stages. Elbows in, roll towards the bridge of your nose, walk your feet in, lift your hips high, L together now. One, two, three, push the arms straight. Chest towards the wall, gaze between the hands. Inner thighs extrude the imaginary block down. Okay, breathe here. Opening up the front body, noticing what you're noticing, where you're noticing. If you like, take your hands to the wall, press your hands into the wall, walk on up the wall. If you are doing those drop backs, this is our practice, our gateway to that. Push down through the feet, sweep the arms overhead, reach up, look back, reach back, look back, reach back, hands to the wall, walk down the wall, hands back to the blocks. And wherever you're at, come on down, once again to your back body, feet apart, knees together. Hands onto the body if you'd like. Eyes open, softly gazing skyward or eyes closed. Reconnect with this restive state, this restive shape. Reunite body and breath.
I would just, I, you know, I'd have us do five more here if we weren't already working with a limited time uh, here. <laughs> We're already over time. But uh, let's just do one more. Come on, rally. I'm right here with you. Um, so bridge, bound bridge, or hands back to your blocks or to the floor, elbows towards the ceiling, push down with your feet, lift the hips, lift to the crown of the head, roll towards the bridge of the nose, keeping the elbow shoulder width distance apart. Everybody, one, two, three, push. Arms straight, chest towards the wall. Inner thighs extrude down. Press the legs more straight, chest towards the wall. Gaze between the hands. Either choose to stay here or walk up the wall. Walk up the wall, walk down the wall. Always be breathing. The ABBs of yoga. Okay, come on down. Situate yourself on your back. Draw the left knee in and up towards the left armpit, interlacing the fingers around the left shin. Pull it in, pull it up, squeeze, and then take hold of the left foot for half happy baby. Interlace the fingers around the sole of the foot, push the foot into the hand, kick, and then pull. Kick and pull. Balance of forces into one another. Either choose to stay here Experiment with extending the right leg straight. If there's something saying, ooh, no, back off, listen to that voice. <laughs> Reconnect with the breath as we slow down the practice. Okay, right foot to the floor if you've extended the right leg. Keep the left foot flexed, cross the ankle over the right shin. Draw the right shin in towards the chest, interlace the fingers behind the thigh in front of the shin. This is a counter pose to all those back bends. So um, the depth of this shape may not be the depth that you've experienced in the past. So we're uh, releasing the low back, giving some attention uh, to stretching the, um, the, uh, <laughs> the muscles that we have spent so much time contracting today, the, low, the lower back, the outer hip, possibly some movement left to right here. You might curl the lower spine up away from the floor, you use the left elbow to push the left thigh away if that feels safe. Right foot back to the floor, uncross the legs. Left foot to the mat, right knee in and up towards the right armpit. Interlace the fingers, squeeze the knee in and up. And then take hold of the foot, transitioning into half happy baby. Right foot, right, right hand to the outside of the foot, left hand to the inside, kick the foot into the hand, pull the knee down, kick and pull. Again, extend the option to extend the left leg. How does it feel? Where does it feel? Does it feel unsafe? Does it feel really good? Option to enjoy this moment. Sometimes I forget about that option. It's, it's often there, uh, if not always. Left foot to the floor, flex your right foot, cross your right ankle over the left thigh, draw the left knee in towards the chest, interlace the fingers, shin close to the chest, gauge the depth of the pose that is um, restorative, which is helpful to bring you into this moment where we are slowing things down but also releasing the low back and uh, creating some awareness in the right outer hip. 
so we, we, you know, we practice making some decisions here, making some decisions around uh, where we push, where we draw back, uh, where we create this, uh, you know, environment of uh, self, self-awareness, um, self-respect. And this is all practice. <laughs> okay, uncross the leg, re-square the hips, lift the feet, cup the knees, sway the knees side to side, feel that gentle pressure of the mat, the earth against the low back. You know, what's nice is there's, there's not a class coming in after this, so uh, if I go a little bit over time, <laughs> it's not going to uh, really uh, bother anybody who's waiting to practice. Okay, um, <laughs> knees in and up towards the armpits, take hold of those out, the outside edges of the feet, and happy, full on, full on happy baby pose, side to side. Inner feet together, interlace the fingers around the outer edges of the feet, widen the knees apart, flatten the low back against the floor, reclined butterfly, reclined bound angle. And finally, release the feet, draw the knees together, wrap your arms around your legs for a self-embrace. Uh, squeeze into yourself, tuck your chin to your chest, forehead towards or to the knees, squeeze the leg, tailbone towards the heels, give yourself a big hug. Thank yourself for this time, for this practice, and then let it go. So this, this is a time not to be missed, Savasana. So, oh, this painting is in the way of my usual uh, legs of the wall place. But uh, if you have a uninterrupted wall space and a bolster or a blanket, in lieu of a inversion today, I would ask you to um, bring that bolster or blanket to the baseboard of the wall, much as I have done here against the door. If you have a strap and would like to take the time to take to make a 12 inch loop in your strap i encourage you to do that if you have some other creature comfort uh, in the form of an eye pillow or a blankie um, get those things or even just a jacket that makes you feel uh, comfortable bring your hips to the wall swing your legs up the wall and then lift your hips onto the height of your blanket or bolster. If you have the strap, bend your knees, place the strap around your ankles, and then extend the legs straight up the wall. Take some deep arrival breaths. Once again, invite yourself into this time and space. Arms at your sides, palms turned up, shoulder blades gently tucked underneath the chest. Can you feel the support of the earth beneath you? time today, I'm going to invite you to arrive with the physical body, the breath, 
any emotions that might be present and identifiable at this moment. Any uh, urgency of thought, any planning that might have um, begun to crowd this time and space. Be receptive to what is. And before pushing, attempting to push it away, to sweep it under the rug, <laughs> consider some acceptance around what is in this moment. Honestly looking, honestly feeling, and honestly allowing yourself this time and space to set those things aside. possible to ex also um, accept that there is an option to just be attempt this union of mind and body, that the body is exhibiting this state of surrender, of openness, of rest, of peace.
perhaps. Practice of Savasana offered a moment of peace, a window to mind and body union. Perhaps by having that experience, if only a brief one, we might trust that there is access to that, to that experience. Something that we can draw from. Turn back to. As you're ready, bring movement back to the extremities of your physical being fingers, toes. Slide the heels down the wall if they're up the wall. Remove the strap if it's there. Extend the left arm along the left ear. Roll onto your left side. <laughs> Moving from our corpse position, our savasana, into this fetal shape. Re-emerging from the practice. On your side opportunity to reconnect with the breath. Eventually push your way back to a seated position. Feeling the body on the earth, rooting down and growing tall. We will close practice with the single sound of Aum. Draw your palms together at heart center. Exhale the breath and inhale for Aum. your receptivity throughout the practice. Um, the light in me recognizes and bows to the light in you. Namaste. Wow, I didn't stick to the timeline at all. <laughs> I think I just did like a 60 minute class. I'm going, I don't know. I don't know how I went over 18 whole minutes on my intended uh, practice time, but um, somebody, somebody stayed with me, so I hope uh, that you enjoyed class. Uh, please reach out uh, if you would like. I'd love to hear from you. Um, yeah, even if it's to say you were just uh, lifting weights while I was uh, doing yoga. <laughs> that was a joke from earlier. Okay. Um, yeah, let me know. Comments, complaints, requests, uh, questions about uh, future plans. Um, I don't have a lot of answers concerning that. I'm still uh, certainly uh, extending my <laughs> affiliation with Rubber Soul with, um, when that uh, studio opens back up uh, to a limited capacity. I, I plan to be there with it. Um, the idea for now is that, that um, we would be focusing on um, smaller um, session classes where there's a pre-registration for a uh, maybe a four or five week uh, class with a particular teacher, which um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to uh, having that experience. Um, getting to know people a little better, getting to know uh, 
a group of students better uh, in order to serve um, serve everybody better, just better, <laughs> gooder. Okay. Um, have a great night. Uh, see you next week. Uh, Monday ten, Tuesday ten, Wednesday five thirty Eastern time. Love you guys.